Tensions rise in Cairo as Egyptian forces storm offices of human rights and pro-democracy groups. After blaming third parties for the recent unrest, the military authorities attempt to point a finger at foreign-funded NGOs. Are they truly to blame or is the military council making another mistake? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Shakun Tilasantharan. Egyptian security forces have stormed the offices of at least 17 human rights and pro-democracy groups across the country, including several based in the U.S. The organizations have been accused by Egypt's military rulers of destabilizing security by fomenting a protest with the help of foreign funding. The raids prompted harsh criticism and even threats from the U.S. From Washington, Tom Ackerman reports. The aftermath of the raid on one of 17 human rights and pro-democracy organizations operating in Cairo. Their staffs reported that computers and other records were seized by government officials who said they're investigating violations of Egypt's laws on foreign-funded groups. They closed off the entrance to our building and spent the next four hours packing up all our belongings, including our computers and office documents. Later, they ordered the entire staff to evacuate the grounds of the office and told us our NGO is being shut down. In disbelief, I watched them as they sealed our doors shut. This is the first time in Egypt for authorities to deal with human rights organizations in such a volatile manner. Some of the groups that were searched financed by the U.S. government, which also spends $1.3 billion a year on aid to the Egyptian military. The law regulating the NGOs is a carryover from the ousted Mubarak government. A minister in the army-backed government, Faiza Abul Naga, has warned that foreign funding of parties and unauthorized NGOs was unacceptable. But at the U.S. State Department, the crackdown drew condemnation. Uh, we call on the Egyptian government to immediately end the harassment of NGOs, uh, NGO staff, return all property, and resolve this issue immediately. If the Egyptian government does not back down, the spokesperson warned the military may see the U.S. Congress retaliate by freezing its badly needed aid. Tom Ackerman, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, Egypt's military ruling council has vowed to investigate how pro-democracy and human rights organizations are funded and has repeatedly said it will not tolerate foreign interference in the country's affairs. The uh, NGO funding issue goes back a long way. In July, the government of former Prime Minister Essam Sharaf drew up a fact-finding committee headed by the Justice Minister to investigate charges of foreign funding for unlicensed local and international NGOs. The committee sought to blacklist NGOs found to have requested financial assistance from U.S. aid. In September, the cabinet uh, said the government investigation found about 30 NGOs to have been illegally receiving foreign funding because they were not registered. And in October, Egypt's justice minister announced that he had commissioned two judges to investigate foreign funding allegations. At the time, the minister said that uh, any organization found guilty of the practice would be charged with, quote, betraying Egypt by deliberately promoting political strife. Since then, several political movements and activist groups have fended off accusations that they had been recipients of unregistered foreign financing, including the prominent April 6th youth movement. But it still remains unclear whether or not Thursday's raids were related to the committee's findings. So, who should be blamed for the recent tension and is Egypt's military council making another mistake? To answer those questions, we're joined by our guests. In Cairo, Maged Reda Boutros, a professor of political sciences at Helwan University. Also in Cairo, Heba Morayev, she's the Egypt researcher for Human Rights Watch. And in London, Adil Darwish, a political editor with the Middle East magazine. Welcome to you all. Thank you very much for speaking to Inside Story. Margaret, if I could start with you, is the military justified in its crackdown of NGOs? Uh, I believe that uh, there is uh, certain considerations that makes it justified. First, Egypt is a sovereign state. It has a law that prohibits illegal transfer and funding of uh, institutions, NGOs, civil societies, unless there is a clear 
docu document st uh, stating that it's, a p it's permitted. That's one thing. The other thing now, it's, uh, when you're talking about national security, it's a red line in Egypt. Uh, in a turmoil uh, political scene like what we witness now, uh, chaotic situation, now we have to maintain our national security. We have to know from where are those funds coming from. Is it regional? Is it Western? Is it international? Yes, I'm positive, like any other person in Egypt. Uh, the public opinion is demanding to re uh, reveal fr the sources from where do those sources come from? So are you yourself those then suspicious of the activities of Egypt's NGOs? When I'm talking about civil societies, NGOs, they are integral parts of the democratic system in Egypt. Democracy is all about the free will of people. When you are influencing the free will of people, when you are directing their opinion, when they, you are financing and funding certain activities, that will um, direct uh, the will of the people, then this is the red line. The government has to step in and uh, seize what's going on. Uh, we know that this turmoil, as I said, turmoil political scene and chaotic situation, uh, intelligence uh, of several countries are working are striving to in influence the political scene in Egypt. And we know that they have interests in Egypt. Egypt is a pivotal country in the Middle East. And they want to accomplish their own interests. We are aware of this. So uh, uh, we were wondering, the public opinion and the, the people in general, observers, they want to know what's going on. Who is the third party? is directing people from where all those activities are funded. Heba, what is your reaction to what Maggots had to say? These raids are not the first time uh, that uh, NGOs have been targeted there in Egypt. Is the military government, as the U.S. says, uh, harassing NGO staff? Yes, it is. I mean, these raids yesterday were an unprecedented move, something we never saw even in the time of Mubarak. A very serious escalation in a process which started last July. This uh, investigation into NGOs not registered under the NGO law is one that targets the entire independent human rights and democracy NGO community in Egypt. And all of them are now at risk because this investigation is using a repressive Mubarak law that should have been reformed immediately after the January and February uprising. I think the views we've just heard are an accurate reflection of government discourse over the last months. There's been a smear campaign against the, these NGOs. There's been an attempt to accuse them of being the foreign hands. The military, of course, has always been looking for foreign hands, which must lie behind this violence to deflect attention from an evaluation of their own performance and their own role in, in the violence and in using excessive force against protesters. So I think the problem, the essential problem here is the NGO law and yesterday's raid uh, is completely unacceptable and also uh, the decision to close down these NGOs. It's one which targets not only international NGOs but also Egyptian NGOs and these have been the voices that have done the most important work over the last months in terms of upholding human rights and exposing abuses. These were the voices that were the heroes of the revolution in a sense and now the military has decided it wants to silence them. Adil, if we could get your opinion, is there any justification for these raids, or is the military government making a mistake? Okay, no, I, 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 it's not a mistake, it's deliberate. And I'll tell you why it's deliberate from uh, Maggot's own answers. He started with talking about legality. The actual raid itself is illegal. Um, they were, uh, the, the officers were challenged to show a court order. You cannot raid people's offices and premises without a court order. So the raid itself, the inspection is illegal. Uh, secondly, he talked about the uh, public opinion demanding to know where the money come from. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a bit confused. How, how did he measure public opinion? Has he actually taken an opinion poll among the majority of the Egyptian public to know that? Uh, thirdly, um, some of these NGOs are not actually hiding where they actually come from. Uh, the National Democratic Institute, for example, doesn't hide it. It's actually funded by the Democratic Party, another one funded by the Republican Party. It's not hiding. And uh, finally, 
Uh, the Muslim Brothers have actually received $72 million from one a certain Gulf state and then received another $28 million, one in July and one uh, in early September, from two Gulf states who the officials actually admitted it to me. I don't want to name names here. So why don't we actually go and investigate that? I'm actually afraid the whole thing is a drum up because uh, the, this government he is talking about that wants to take national security, this government actually itself doesn't represent anybody. It's not an elected government. The military council is not an elected. Neither the military council nor the current government represented the Egyptian people from a democratic or a legal point of view. Now, Maged, you said you're suspicious of where some organizations are getting uh, their funding, but do you share the military government's view that they're using this money to stir up unrest, to fuel those protests? Well, uh, the, uh, the military government or the Supreme Military Council did not say this. The government did, this, did not say this. Um, the ambassador of United States and the Secretary of State uh, have admitted that they have uh, transferred hundreds of millions of dollars to NGOs, but they never stipulated who were those NGOs. We know that uh, certain countries in the Gulf area do also transfer money. We, I mean, we don't have to uh, justify this. I mean, it's admitted everywhere. That's one thing. When the uh, the national uh, government of Egypt. I mean, uh, does it mean that it's not elected? Does it mean that we leave the political scene free to be preached and violated by any uh, source, uh, by any foreign uh, party or any source uh, of finance coming by an illegal way? No, I, I don't see any rationale in this. I mean, in any country, when there is a law that uh, 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 it, it's implemented to uh, reveal from where are the sources of foreign funding, then it has okay. to be re revealed. When you don't reveal it, it's out of law. Okay, so you're saying that uh, NGOs need to be more transparent about their funding. Heba, I can see you shaking your head. Well, I wanted to jump in there because, first of all, all of these donors have been absolutely transparent about who they are funding. And the NGOs themselves have also been open about where they're receiving their sources of funding from. I mean, no Egyptian NGO will need to hide when it gets an EU fund before the Egyptian government. And especially since this whole drama started back in April, which was about an initial uh, announcement of a, a fund allocated by the United States government to serve the support of human rights and democracy, uh, we know for a fact that at that stage, um, all of the NGOs receiving U.S. funding were contacted and asked if they were happy to have the details of those funds handed over to the Egyptian government. So this is not about where the funding is coming from. The Egyptian government knows it. Organizations have been transparent, and they're not afraid to say that, yes, they're receiving a fund from the EU, from various EU governments, or from the U.S. government, or from different foundations. This is part of their right to operate. The entire NGO community in Egypt is dependent on foreign funding because of Mubarak because of this system. Because under Mubarak, no Egyptian businessman would fund these organizations. They were monitored by state security investigations, their communication was tapped, and they knew this, and they operated in this context. So to try to then move to cut off foreign funding, because this is what this investigation is about. It's not about information. It's about restricting their ability to operate, and this is what's happening today. And to say that in any way that this is a way to destabilize Egypt, or that this is in any way related to the violence, uh, well, either terrifies me about the state uh, in which Egyptian intelligence services are in, if this is what they're going after, if they really think that there are security risks and they're going after NGOs, and this shows that they're not very good at their job, frankly, or is an attempt, once again, to deflect attention from the source of a lot of these violations. These organizations have been the ones saying to the military after Maspiro, no, they're not foreign hands. We want to talk about your role in running over uh, peaceful protesters and in killing Coptic protesters. After 
after Mohammed Mahmoud, uh, after the violence in December, again, th their attention was always on the military. And I was very shocked, frankly, to hear the Minister of Justice on December 21st say that the investigations into the sources of violence in Mohammed Mahmoud and in December, that, uh, that the investigative judges had found links between that investigation and between the NGO funding investigation. Because here again, we get um, both the, the kind of xenophobic narrative that we've heard from the military and from different government officials now at a very practical level, um, that link being made at the, at the level of the judicial authorities. And, okay. and that is very frightening for what is to come. Well, among those uh, objecting to the latest crackdown on NGOs are German and U.S. authorities. As we heard in Tom Ackerman's report, the U.S. has threatened to retaliate by freezing badly needed aid. So what sort of financial help does Egypt get from the U.S.? Let's have a closer look. Uh, most of the American aid goes to the Egyptian military. That's according to the U.S. Congressional Research Service report. So what's the breakdown like? Over the last 30 years, Egypt has been the second largest recipient of U.S. foreign aid after Israel. In 2010 and 2011, $1.3 billion went to strengthen Egyptian forces. The bulk of the military assistance goes to pay for Egypt's purchases of military hardware, upgrades to existing equipment and maintenance and support contracts. Among the big-ticket defense items that Egypt has bought from the United States are F-16 fighters, M1A1 tanks, uh, for which General Dynamics Corps is the prime contractor, and Boeing's Chinook transporter helicopters. Another $1.9 million went to training meant to bolster long-term U.S.-Egyptian military cooperation. It's also worth mentioning that the U.S. grants Egypt about $250 million in economic assistance, and that's divided among several sectors including health, education, economic development, and the promotion of democracy. Adil, if we could uh, come back to you now. Do you think the U.S. will carry out its threat of freezing much-needed aid to Egypt? Well, you see, that's the point I was going to make, in fact. Well, well, uh, Potters and cutters come to mind here. Uh, I mean, the, 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 if they're actually objecting or want transparency, from NGOs, about the transparency of the army. The Egyptian army receives 1.3 billion. It used to be 1.8 billion until uh, seven years ago, uh, and now 1.3. And they are not transparent about it. It goes, it bypasses the Egyptian treasury, goes straight to the coffers of the army. And the, I don't actually recall a single instant where a select committee in the Egyptian parliament has actually called the army accountants. Uh, and ask them where the money gone. So it's a bit hypocritical, actually, uh, from the Egyptian army, uh, which is actually ruling now the country, uh, not constitutionally, uh, to ask the NGOs to be uh, transparent. And secondly, um, I wish the United States to stop this megaphone diplomacy and uh, President Obama put his actually money where his mouth is. He's very good at rhetoric, him and Hillary Clinton. All, what, all what it needs is one single phone call to General Tantawi or Field Marshal Tantawi and says to him, you stop actually violating human rights. You get down actually on your job there as protecting Egypt's security on the borders and get on with the, um, with the constitution and let democracy take its course. All what it takes a phone call instead of actually calling press conferences and making meaningless um, statements in the media. Margaret, how do you think the Egyptian military is going to deal with the U.S. concerns? Can they afford to just dismiss these? Well, when we talk, we talk facts. Fact number one, uh, as my colleagues said and uh, your introduction uh, stipulated, that we receive uh, $1.3 billion uh, of uh, military aid. This will make a lot of pressure on Egypt. Uh, to not to abide, but just to uh, consider uh, some uh, calls. Uh, Egypt. The second fact: Egypt is a sovereign state. Um, it does not take orders from any other country, but it takes it will give uh, up the, money the back opinions to the American taxpayers. Of, if you are a sovereign state, uh, thanks. Thanks for interrupting. You can give the money back to, um, to American taxpayer. <laughs> if you are talking about sovereignty. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Yes, it's sovereignty. Still, still sovereignty. This is a fact. Okay. Now, if we talk yeah, about that, 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 that money, <laughs> the American the taxpayer needed it for hospitals and for okay. schools there. Give it back can, to them, then. Gentlemen, if we could bring the discussion back to <laughs> the NGOs, uh, Heba, if we could come back to you, what sort of reality do NGOs in Egypt face in post-revolution uh, Egypt? 
Well, NGOs are used to operating in this gray zone that Mubarak first created, where he would deny them registration under the law, which then requires them to have prior permission for every fund uh, that they receive. So they're used to, being, to having this threat of the law hanging over their heads. But since the revolution, the shift has been primarily in, the, in, in their uh, ability to get, a, get slightly better access initially to the government, although that changed uh, June and July onwards, and get better access to the media. For the first time, the NGO voices calling for transitional justice, calling for security sector reform, and you know, an end to police abuse were voices that you would hear on the media more frequently. And yet now, especially from June and July onwards, because of the smear campaign against NGOs receiving foreign funding, even that initial space that, that existed has, has definitely gone. And we've also there's also been a shutdown in terms of government access. I mean, the main problem here is that if this investigation goes forward, Forward. And obviously, the raid is, is the most serious uh, aspect of it. But in the meantime, people are still being summoned for interrogation. And the results uh, of this investigation, should it go to court, the penalties are imprisonment for human rights defenders and dissolution of the organizations. So should this organization go forward, we could see an actual closure of the entire independent human rights and democracy NGO community in Egypt. And I don't know whether the military realizes that uh, the, the, the fall out in terms of their reputation for the action they've taken. I mean, they're not exactly behaving like a confident, uh, a confident uh, government um, that, that senses that Egypt is a strong, sovereign strait. These kinds of actions show their deep insecurity, the fact that they're sort of grasping at straws and now going after the NGO community. I think what needs to happen immediately is for this investigation to be halted and for the NGO law to be reformed. In the same way that we saw the political parties law reformed uh, earlier in the year, and that we've seen a trade unions law uh, now being uh, a reform of the trade unions law being discussed and in the meantime new trade unions uh, independent trade unions being established the same has not happened with the NGO law and that's what needs to happen now okay Margaret back to you what sort of fallout do you think there will be in Egypt from this action will these raids not just exacerbate the tension already in the country well there is a unfinished answer to my to your earlier question about uh, the military and response to aid. My last part was that uh, as a sovereign state, Egypt asked United States officially to stop aid and replace it by collaboration, trade collaboration. Uh, if my colleague at the other end does not like this, so he should uh, take rule one again. Um, he should resort to rule one. Rule one is sovereignty is a pillar in international relations. If they don't like it, so the Egyptian uh, reply was so clear, stop aid, we have uh, partners in trade. We need to replace it by partnership. That's first part. The second part, I we just wonder. We haven't heard that from the military, I have to you, say. <laughs> uh, uh, just let me uh, continue on. The other part is that uh, when we do not abide to law, the international community says now those countries do not abide to law. When we try to abide to a law, uh, a legal, uh, legal precedent, um, then people say uh, you should leave uh, the uh, civil society okay. work alone freely. Right. We have to make it freely because no democracy I'm, without a civil society. I have to jump in. But the civil society is regulated. Okay, Adil, yes. back to you. Last word to you. What do you see as the way forward? I think the way forward is for the uh, Egyptian army uh, to realize that you have no legitimacy there to be rulers. They, they, they are continuity of the Colonel Nasser military coup in 1952, and that's the source of the, all the ills of Egypt. Again, that the ball is in the United States court. They should put pressure on the Egyptian army. I don't think the Egyptian army uh, is actually will say, oh, no, thank you very much. We don't want aid. There would be nothing without aid and, the, and uh, pressure from America for the Egyptian army to actually uh, uh, bend down to the will of the people there and let democracy take its course. We have, I'm afraid, run out of time. Thanks very much to our guests, Maged Reda Butras and Heba Marayaf in Cairo and Adil Dawish in London.
And thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. If you have any feedback, please just email us your thoughts to insidestory at aljazeera.net. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye for now.